So this patient's coming in for drainage of a lesion that's been present on her left flank for about two, three weeks now. She's noticed it at a much smaller level for a long time, but it just started to accelerate. You can see how inflamed this is. She's been on antibiotic now for a few days, but it's not been early enough or strong enough to get this to settle. So this is almost certainly an infected epidermal cyst. So we're gonna have to just freeze this up and open it up. The concern, and I've already talked to her about this, is obviously because there's infection or inflammation there, freezing may not work as well but we'll see how we do with this, so bear with me. So we wanna always inject this with a bevel up. This is a 27 gauge, we wanna be as small as possible. You're gonna feel a poke here, I apologize. You're gonna feel a poke. You're gonna feel a burning. You okay? Mm -hmm. So this I wanna be very superficial. You wanna try and avoid the actual capsule itself. Poke. Just breathe as best you can. Good job. Poke. Very good. Getting there. Just breathe. And this is uncomfortable, and this is why when people are watching these videos and just, you know, if the freezing is going to be effective, we want to add as much as we have to, but freezing in and of itself is pretty uncomfortable. How's that feel? Does that hurt? No, it doesn't feel. No pain, okay. So generally, this is the area you want. Obviously, when you're incising into something, you want that area to have good freezing. You may have some feeling underneath it, but it'll be a different type of nerve supply. So people will maybe feel that, but it's not nearly the same level of discomfort. So this is our number 11 blade here. Feel poke here. You okay? Yeah. No pressure, sorry. You okay? Yeah. Fine. So you can see that's a combination of pus and there's keratin behind that. You okay? Okay? It's painful. I'll get some extra freezing here then. I'm gonna try and put some up. I'm gonna try and see if we can take some of that membrane out. Okay. You okay? Yeah. And this is always our problem. See if we can get enough anesthesia to find a balance where we're not causing her too much discomfort by getting out as much as we can. than before. So this will be the big issue is whether the infection is going to be such that we we can't get that out. So I'm just going to put pressure on this and not try to pull it out. Sorry. So what I'm trying to do here is make sure that I'm getting the superficial vessels as much as I can. Okay. Yeah. So and sometimes there's a timing part to this, like giving it enough time to take effect. 
generally just a couple of minutes, but everybody's a little bit different that way. Doesn't hurt on the surface here. Mm -mm. Does it hurt when I do that? It's way through. So you feel it a bit, but not bad. Yeah. So obviously this is all cyst membrane. You okay there? Yeah. Good. That's okay. Put more pressure down here. Thank you. You okay? So I'm trying to clear out as much of the membrane, even though this is an infected cyst and we can't get the entire capsule out. We want to try and clean that out as much as possible. There. Still see some residual back through here. That's keratin there. So I'm going to irrigate this now. So the irrigation will clean out additional areas, but also sometimes loosen extra capsule that's there. And this is generally caused overall by surface bacteria. So she's had this cyst that's sitting there and then something caused bacteria to get underneath the skin. Uh, in a second, I'm gonna see mm -hmm. that. There's a little bit of a fragment there that's flopping. So the reason why I'm trying to take out more is just because even though there's recurrence rates when you can't take the entire capsule out, sometimes if you get enough of it out, you'll get lucky. So you should be able to recognize that that's capsule there. See that there. And the other part to this to always be asking is why work within this small space? Would it be simpler if I open it up to this degree? And obviously it would be but we're also worried about scar potential here, so we want to minimize that as much as possible, even for situations like this. You should be able to see the same thing there. That's also this capsule. You okay? Yeah. for cover? Uh, this will probably take a few weeks. Um, so we're gonna, I am gonna put a little bit of packing in just for tonight, just because I wanna make sure there's no other areas that collapse into it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna use a curette in a second, see if I can dissect that down. Doesn't, doesn't feel like, does that hurt? You okay? Yeah, I don't feel it at all. Okay, good. I don't feel any. No. Yeah. 
Pronto. As I'm looking here, see these ads seems to tilt it up. Looks pretty clean all the way around. So I'm just gonna take a swab of the area now, see if we can find any live bacteria. So this is certainly something we've gotten away from where we used to pack these all the time. Now it's atypical that we do. And in cases where we used to pack these for literally almost ever for weeks on end, this is gonna be the only packing I do is just overnight, just to allow this to heal in. And then tomorrow I'll take that out and then we'll just sort of see how we're healing and then sort of go from there. So with these, I always cut away from where the area may be contaminated first, just like that, while your scissors are clean, and then I'll go afterwards and trim that. There we go. So we're going to put a dressing on that, and then we'll see you back tomorrow.